Hello, welcome to this tutorial on the Saab 340 aircraft. Uh, been inspired from uh, the video the Q8 pilot did on uh, the Saab 340 uh, comparison between the two on the market, and uh, just decided to do a, uh, a brief tutorial on uh, how the uh, the basic way of operating the, uh, the Saab. So in this video, we'll be looking at uh, the uh, start up, taxi, uh, take off, and uh, we'll do a landing back on uh, the ILS. So this is uh, the aircraft as it would normally load. I haven't uh, changed any switches at this point. So we'll uh, just start by uh, going through a few uh, key commands that I have set up to uh, assist in operating the aircraft. So under uh, leading edge simulations uh, command, uh, first one I'd uh, highlight be uh, under autopilot control panel lever, have uh, both the autopilot and your damper uh, paddles assigned to a uh, keystroke. Uh, likewise, the CTOT, uh, toggle left and right, uh, have those assigned to a keystroke. Uh, these are all just because they're down on the centre pedestal and the point in uh, flight where you'd actually want to use those. It's a bit uh, inconvenient to look down. A uh, few other ones. Uh, engine overhead, uh, start, switch, toggle negative and positive. I have those assigned to the corresponding uh, one being the left engine, two being the right engine. Uh, can get a little bit uh, clicky when you're uh, starting the engines through the motoring start procedure. Uh, another uh, down the bottom here, uh, gust lock release. It actually requires two clicks to get the gust lock, so one of those has to be a uh, keystroke, so the uh, release lock I've uh, got on the key there. And uh, also go the um, Hydraulic tiller, I can't remember what that one is under. There we go, so command gear tiller hydraulic on and off. I've got that assigned to a keystroke. Again, that's something you uh, would engage during uh, rollout, so I don't really want to be looking down to uh, engage that one. And uh, the last one would be the go around. Uh, so that one's under uh, command power lever button go around. And uh, again, that's obviously looking down here to hit the button is. Uh, not really uh, a good idea when you're at uh, 200 odd feet. I'll leave a list of uh, those in the uh, comments for the video. So now that's, uh, that's out of the way, uh, a few other minor things before we get started, just in terms of uh, switch positionings. Uh, there's a few little things here, like the boot indicator, uh, that should be on, that controls the power to the uh, status lights for the uh, uh, de-ice boots, no reason to uh, turn those off. We'll uh, just get turn that on first. The uh, high pressure bleed valve should be closed and uh, the inverter uh, normally just left on. So this is typically how the aircraft would be left. Uh, so we'll bring some uh, battery power on now. Uh, not every port has ground power available so this is the primitive version I guess of uh, how you could pre-flight with the aircraft. So the essential avionics is the only uh, uh, avionic system capable of running on uh, batteries only. So we just have the uh, one nav unit, one comm unit, and uh, that's about it. So if I turn the, uh, the main avionic switches on, nothing happens. There's not enough power to uh, uh, have those running as well. So we'll uh, connect up the ground power unit. It's on the uh, little side menu bar. The truck icon has the uh, ground power unit in here. So with that check, we can now see external power is available. A DC amp selector in the external power position showing 28 volts. Now that we have uh, that available, we can bring it on bus with uh, the switch here at the bottom of the electronics panel. And uh, with that on now, we can turn on the avionics and we'll get uh, all of the main uh, displays coming on. The attitude heading reference system will start aligning. And uh, we might even turn the GPS on. So while we still have this uh, open, we'll get rid of all these static items. We don't really need uh, pitot covers, wheel trucks, etc. Okay, so while that's aligning up, there is um, two different ways you can start the engines on the Saab 340. Uh, one being the uh, direct start, which uses the uh, digital engine control to uh, complete the start sequence. And the other method is known as a motoring start, where uh, the uh, engine gets pulled up to about 20% before you put fuel in, and then uh, it'll uh, take over from there. Uh, 
So we'll uh, do both during this video. We might uh, do a direct start on the first one for the right engine and we'll uh, motor the left one uh, just to highlight the differences between the two. So it looks like it's about to finish its alignment. There we go. So we can move into the engine start now. So we'll do a um, direct start on the uh, right engine. So what we need to do here, uh, first step, confirm whatever power source we're using is sufficient. So we have our 28 volts. The uh, left and right avionics need to come off. The uh, ignition switches are uh, a guarded three-way uh, switch. So the uh, off position needs to remove the guard all the way down, normal and then continuous uh, in the full up position. Uh, we're just going to leave it in normal for a uh, direct start. Uh, obviously I want the beacon and the uh, pack signs and uh, the condition lever we're going to place oh, just one of them, place into the uh, start position here so again on the side there's this little side torque thing comes up uh, just as a bit of a mud map of uh, all the different positions that we have here uh, so I'll just quickly go through those, the fuel off fairly self-explanatory start is also a feathered position for uh, the propeller here uh, Unfeather is only really used in the air when uh, you've got aerodynamic load on it, otherwise uh, you can just come straight into the min-max range. Uh, the very top section here is torque motor lockout. But, uh, you don't actually want to use that position. That's uh, again an abnormal uh, situation which uh, effectively removes the, uh, the digital engine control unit from the uh, system and uh, takes away some of our protections which uh, you don't want to do. The only way to reset that would be to uh, come all the way back to fuel off. Alright, so that's all uh, set for the start. So on a uh, direct start, we only need to hold the starter in position for a second or two and release. You can see the voltage dropped as the uh, power is diverted into the start system. Uh, the X-Plane 11 uh, engine model uh, has changed since this aircraft was released so the uh, temperature and the prop RPM will go a little bit silly during the uh, initial start-up procedures. So 56% NG, the starter's cut out, the electrics have come back and the engine's stabilising. Alright, so now that the uh, engine's running we can reset the generator or reset the bleed valve. Now the generator will come online but it won't come onto the bus. The uh, logic in the electrical system whenever the external power is connected it takes precedence over all the other forms of electrical power on the aircraft. So that light will remain illuminated until we disconnect it. So we'll do that now and it's immediately taken over with the generator. We'll get rid of the whole thing now. So back through the uh, the truck icon brings up the menu and just uh, tick to remove. A few seconds later it'll be removed from the aircraft there it goes and uh, put the DC amp selector on the uh, le uh, right generator ready for uh, the next engine start. So this time we're going to start the left engine using a motoring start. So we're going to uh, take manual control of the start sequence uh, initially, spool the engine up then put fuel in and uh, ignition and uh, at that point the uh, digital engine controls will take over for the remainder of the start. So again, going through uh, the sequence, confirm we have sufficient power, the avionics are turned off. This time we want to bring the guard up and move the ignition to the off position. That's the only way you can uh, motor the engine on a Saab. If I leave it in uh, normal and uh, toggle the starter, nothing actually happens with the condition lever in the fuel off position. So we need to bring that down to off. And now we're ready to start. So this time because we're manually controlling it we need to physically hold the start switch in position which is why I've got it mapped to a keystroke. So we start, the volt, uh, sorry, the amperage comes up as the uh, starter kicks in. We're looking for about 20%. Introduce fuel, introduce ignition. And at this point we can release it. The uh, deco is taken over again and the engine start will be uh, completed through the, uh, the electronic system. So it looks like it was a bit happier starting the engine this way. We didn't get anywhere near the uh, temperature we did on the last engine. Starter's cut out again at 56% NG. There's its peak and the engine's stable. So we can reset the left generator. Now this time we can see because we don't have external power on. It takes a few seconds for the generator to come on. 
There it goes. Alright, so now we can uh, start tidying up from uh, our start. So we'll reguard the uh, ignition switches in the normal position. Auto Corson can come on. We'll uh, check the output on the left generator, which is uh, sufficient. Reset the bleed valve. Uh, we'll turn on the recirc fans as well to get the airflow into the cabin. Now the left recirc is a little bit of a pain. The five finger here is actually the fire handle. So I'm kind of over the recirc switch, but that's actually the fire handle. So I might need to move the view slightly to get at it. I'm looking for just the one finger, and that's the recirc switch there. Uh, it's coming back down and bring the uh, emergency lighting to the arm position. Can now bring on both avionics and uh, we're all set. So now that we have our engines running we'll uh, bring them up out of feather. So the icing system up here, the AC generators won't actually work until the uh, propellers above a thousand RPM. That's, um, they're both sitting off the uh, accessory drive box on the uh, propeller gearbox so we'll do that now. So as I uh, mentioned earlier there's uh, the unfeather position here, we can stop in it technically to unfeather the uh, propeller, however without air loading on the uh, the prop we can just go straight into the min-max range. Uh, again the engine model is not quite right here at the moment so we're going to get a bit of an over, over temp and uh, yep, over speed on the prop as well and move it up into the max detent. Being careful not to go too far, we don't want to lock out the torque motor. And uh, this time we'll just pause in the unfeathered position. And we'll probably do the exact same thing. Yeah, there goes an over temp, and uh, not quite as bad on the overspeed on the prop. And so that's just a result of the uh, changes to the um, engine model in X Plane 11. Alright, so now that that's up and uh, running. We can uh, bring our electrics online, uh, sorry, any ice online, so standby pedo and the uh, left and right front windshield heat are the, uh, the items that we want uh, running at this point. So that's all set, the aircraft's uh, now ready to taxi. So with the uh, this little icon here, I like to just bring this down and tuck it out the way down the bottom just so I can see exactly where everything is because uh, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, it does snap into positions, but uh, it's not like a real aircraft where there's a physical gate that you need to pull power levers up or condition levers up to get over, so we'll uh, just hide that down there. Alright, so taxiing the aircraft, uh, the nose wheel steering on this requires the uh, tiller to be pushed down to engage it. It's got a uh, spring loading to keep it in the up position, so if I uh, use the rudders now, being X-Plane 11, they're interlinked, uh, nothing happens. So we need to physically push down on the button. Uh, as I said before, I have that uh, assigned to a keystroke. And uh, now that that's down, I can steer the aircraft. So we're at uh, Fort Lauderdale. It's just loaded up uh, in sort of the maintenance hangar area to the north of uh, 28 Right. So we'll just taxi down here to the runway and uh, look at the departure. So as we're doing that, we'll uh, just set a few things up. Uh, I might climb to 6,000 on uh, departure out of here. The um, heading bug uh, runway is 276. I'll uh, set that up. Uh, it's 276. And uh, with the CTOT, so this is the CTOT down here, constant torque on takeoff. The way this system works, it uh, is designed to upscale fuel to whatever setting you have in here. I'm going to set 80 just because I want it to be relatively uh, slow performance to uh, buy me a bit of time uh, as I sort of describe what I'm doing uh, as we go here. Uh, could use, uh, normally would be a bit higher than that, but uh, I'm just sort of lowballing it to uh, buy time. So the way the uh, takeoff is going to work, in order to get this to uh, upscale fuel, it cannot downscale fuel. So we need to set our power levers to a position less than what we have. So we've gone with 80, so we're going to be targeting around about 70% torque on the uh, power lever before we engage the CTOT system. Uh, 
the system itself won't actually function until the power lever is above the 64 degree power lever angle. Uh, there's a little yellow line that runs across, uh, it's not actually uh, painted on here. Uh, so the only other way we can tell the auto coursing system is the exact same. It also doesn't function until you're above 64 degree power lever angle. So we're going to look for this light to come on once we have the auto coursing arm light up. And we know we're in a uh, in the 64 degree range, and we can engage the uh, CTOT system. The uh, Saab is capable of using either flap zero or 15 for departure. We're going to go flap zero. Uh, Fort Lauderdale is not exactly a short runway, so we don't really have any need to uh, go flap 15. And uh, finally, the last thing we want to do is set up the trim. So for a flap zero departure, we're looking at about 0.6 degrees nose up. Uh, it's probably about it there and we want one and a half units of right yaw uh, or right rudder trim so it doesn't actually have a scale on here so I'm going to have to eyeball it a little bit uh, so I'm just going to sort of put it just over the W like that so we're uh, pretty much all set to go so uh, we'll uh, bring on the external lights we'll taxi out onto the runway now uh, normally uh, takeoff in the Saab is done with the bleed valves closed, so we'll close those now. And we'll just check we've got everything ready to go, so the gust lock's off. Uh, controls uh, full and free, transponders on, bleed valves closed. And we have no enunciators. So just before we do roll, there's one more uh, thing I just want to show you quickly. So during the takeoff roll, the um, way we interact with the flight control computer. Alright, it's all lined up. So we want to be in heading and indicated mode. So we need to hit indicated first, now we can move the electronic bug here. So I'm just going to set it at 140 just to demonstrate. So the way this system works, we have this little black button down here called Vert Sync. It's on the uh, right side for the captain, left side for the first officer. And that syncs whatever pitch mode you have to the current aircraft state. So at the moment we're sitting here doing nothing and indicated, so I'm going to hit that and it'll uh, default back to its minimum of 88 knots. So we want to be able to uh, use that during the departure. So that button I actually have synced to my uh, control column. Uh, so I've got it on the um, first officer's sort of setup at the moment. So the uh, left side here I've got uh, set to uh, the leading edge sim command control wheel button that sync and uh, both those sides so I can press whichever one is uh, closest to my thumb. So we're going to use that during the departure as well. So it'll be a flap zero departure, we'll use V1 rotate V2 of 110 knots and then we're uh, looking to climb out at 146 knots up to the uh, MSA. So we're all set to go now, take off inhibit, start the timers. Start advancing the power lever, looking for the auto course and arm light to illuminate. It can be difficult sometimes, it's not the easiest light to see in this uh, version of the Saab. Auto course and armed. Set power, turn the CTOP switches on. Power set, 80 knots. T1, rotate, want to come up to 15 degrees. Positive rate of climb, gear up. Now holding this until the gear is up, we have 150 knots is the uh, gear retraction speed. So we don't want to let it uh, go too fast while well, that's uh, cycling. So now that it's up, we can lower the nose about 10 degrees or so. This is where we can hit the sink, get that uh, flight director bar back down, 146, back up to 15 to maintain that. And uh, now that we're moving, we can go autopilot on. So again, I have that set to a keystroke. Autopilot's on, heading indicated. Through a thousand feet now, we can set climb power. 
So what we need to do here is slowly wind the CTOT off. And at some point the power lever will take over. So we had about 80% set on the power lever by the look. So the CTOT's off, turn the switches off. And uh, now we can uh, bring it back. So 80% is a reasonable number. We can skip the power lever and go straight to the condition lever. It needs to come back to uh, about the min stop, 12.30 RPM. A bit far about there, so they should be just pointing straight up for the prop gauges. Now I'll bring this friction lock forward so we can get to the prop sink, turn that on. We'll reset the bleed valve. And we want to come down and double check that the cabin is pressurising now that we've done that. We'll turn the other one back on and the taxi light can come off because the gear's up. Now we'll check above the MSA, it's gone through it pretty quickly, it's 2100 I believe here at Fort Lauderdale, can turn off the auto course and now we can uh, accelerate the aircraft that we're above the MSA, so we're going to go into uh, high climb, so we can kind of trick it slightly as we do this, if I hit the vert sync button, it's trying to sync to what we're currently at and then resetting. So as I do that, it's kind of holding it at about 5 degrees nose up, which is sort of a good number to let it accelerate at. Alright, so we're off and away. I'm just going to bring the power back. So climb power setting, we're sort of looking around about 820 degrees ITT. It'll be around 60 to 70% torque. So we'll leave it about there. And uh, we're off. Now that we've successfully departed, we'll look at an arrival. So we've taken off 28 left, so we might uh, just go out and do the ILS back on to 10 right. So I'll just pull the chart up for that. Okay, so we're just going to level off at uh, 6,000 shortly there. So uh, we got 11175 for the uh, localizer. that in both. Alts. So it's going to start capturing the altitude now. So it's not actually captured it when it comes up with alts. We need to wait for the long range cruise speed to come up next to it before it's actually physically maintaining. If I go to change this now. So it's tripped into out. Sometimes it won't actually do that. It'll just go straight back into uh, VS or pitch mode, whatever you had beforehand. I don't want to let it accelerate too much, so I'll just bring the power back, try and keep it at around 200 knots, and uh, we might actually start coming back down for the approach. So I'll set 3000 VS, and I'm just going to go 1500 feet per minute in descent, and uh, I'll probably come back, need about 25% torque, so we don't want to let it accelerate too much. Um, right, so what are we looking at here? So the initial approach fix is 13.9 miles, so we're basically at that already. So we might just do a um, bit of a sector entry onto this thing, so it's going to be a parallel. So we'll just set this out. We'll go out uh, one minute and then it'll be a right turn to come back in to, um, uh, for the, uh, the sector entry and then we might even need a hold after that depending on how much height we lose. So 13.9, that's the initial, so I'll just reset the timer and we fly up down for a minute. Slow it up a little bit more, shouldn't be much more than 210 knots. Well, legally it shouldn't be more than 210 knots in a hold at this altitude, so I'll slow that up. We're sort of looking, ideally, we'd be back around 180. So we'll uh, start setting up for uh, the configuration for the approach. So the landing lights, as we're coming down through 10,000, the landing lights would uh, come on. We'd uh, set the seat top back up for uh, a missed approach, so I'll just set 90 about 95% for uh, the missed approach if we need that. Uh, yeah, this will work, well, that's 3000 already. So that, that's the basics of what we need for uh, for the approach. So we're still coming out, this will work out quite nicely. We'll uh, use 110 knots for uh, VREF. And uh, what we're going to do, the gear speed the uh, limit on this is 200 knots and the first stage of flap, when I um, say that I'm not counting flap 7. So flap 7 is used for as uh, in asymmetrics if we had uh, one engine in operative and uh, during the go around. Outside of that uh, the first stage is effectively flap 15. 
And the final stage for landing will be flat 20. You can do a flat 35 landing, but uh, they're fairly rare. Uh, it's only when you've got a very uh, limited runway that you'd uh, really use that. So we'll uh, just do a flat 20 landing. Put a bit more speed in now that we're maintaining. So we want to be sort of around 170 knots as we come into the uh, initial approach fix. And that'll give us uh, the capability to get the gear out in the first stage of flat. Once we're through there, uh, approaching the final approach fix, we'll uh, reduce to 160 knots and uh, take flap 20. And then uh, as we come down closer to the runway, we'll uh, let the speed come back to about VRF plus 10, hold that to the fence line, and uh, we'll land hopefully at about 110 knots. get rid of the uh, bearing there, that's just the ADF pointer, it's uh, not actually tuned to anything, so I'm just going to remove it from uh, the view. Alright, so we're inbound in the sector entry now, coming to uh, pick up the localizer. I don't want to actually engage uh, any of the approach mode or the uh, localizer mode at the moment with the uh, course bar out here. The aircraft's going to want to turn into a 45 degree intercept and I don't want it to do that, so I'm just going to leave it as it is now. Course bar's active. Now we can engage a uh, there it goes, localizer 1, glide slope still armed, and it should just come in and pick that up nicely for us. I'll just bring the power back slightly, it should be around about 30% torque is uh, what we're after at the moment. I really would have thought it would turn a bit quicker than that, I think we're going to overshoot the localizer here. Lucky there's a uh, parallel runway for us to hit traffic in. Alright, so we're just coming up on the initial approach fix. Glide slope should start coming down soon. We want to start configuring at about one dot low, maybe half a dot low once you get a bit more quicker at it. But I'll do it one dot uh, just to give us a bit more time. As we do this, we're just going to need to bump the power slightly because we're going to be adding drag, but it won't start descending immediately. So the glide slope's active. And we might start there, so gear down. So I'll select that. I'm going to bump the power about 5 or 10% because we don't want it to slow down too much. And taxi light can come on, auto caution's on. Condition levers can go to max. So prop sync comes off, friction lock needs to come off. Bring the uh, props up into the max. Being careful again not to go into torque motor lockout need a bit more power than that and flaps 15. Glide slope's, act, uh, sorry, glide slope's captured. Now we can back it off slightly because we're going to use the uh, gravity to accelerate the aircraft. We just want to sit here around about 165, 170 knots. Uh, final approach point, uh, so we got 6.9 DME uh, glide slope checks 1800. So that's the next stage. I'm just going to back some of the uh, yaw trim off here. The, um, there we go, that's a bit better. So X-Plane 11, the um, yaw damper doesn't really work. It should have trimmed that for us, but uh, I'll just manually do it myself there to keep the aircraft in balance. Alright, so we're coming up about a mile and a bit before the uh, final approach point. So I'm just going to let that... We're at 165 knots there, which is right on the flap limit. There is a placard just over here. And uh, so flap 20 limit is 165 knots. So I'm just going to let that bleed back ever so slightly. That looks alright. Flaps 20 selected. And now that it's back, we just need to bump... Oh, that's a bit much there. Just bump the power about 5% again. I just wanted to try and sit at about 160 knots now. We don't want to drag ourselves in, but we do need to configure. So 6.9 was through, it's about 18, uh, 1800 glide slopes checked, so we're all good to continue on the ILS. 
Now we're just going to hold this, we only need about a thousand feet uh, to slow the aircraft up so we'll just hold this now until we get to about a thousand feet AGL About now, we'll just slowly bring the power leaf back. We're going to target about 25% torque. And uh, that should let the speed wash off. We want to get back to VRF plus 10, which is 120 knots. And we want to hold that to the uh, airport fence. So keeping our speed fairly well here, we're not going to really get in the way of any of the uh, larger jets. They're doing roughly the same speed that uh, the Saab is down the ILS. Uh, coming up on 120, still 500 feet. I just need to bump that slightly just to keep the uh, power up. Or the speed up, sorry. I'll just do a uh, quick final checklist. The auto coursing is on, gear down 3 grand, condition levers are max, flaps 20 cert, landing clearance is received, last stage is your damper off, and we'll do that with the autopilot. So the autopilot's off and the auto damper's now off. We are on an ILS, so we can just use the, uh, the flight director here to guide us into the runway. We're looking to touch down at the 1,000 foot marker. 120 knots all the way in through here. We're visual at this stage, we can ignore the uh, glide slope as we come in, slowly bringing the power off, nose comes up, and slight bounce there, but we're down. Fader lights illuminate, we can come into the reverse, as it slows down we're going to start losing rudder authority back onto the nose wheel steering. And as I said before, I have that assigned to a keystroke so I can engage that without looking down. That's a uh, basic approach in the Saab 340. So the same principles apply if you're uh, doing a non-precision approach. The, um, basically the same uh, configurations and speeds. The only difference would be uh, that we're using vertical speed to maintain the profile instead of the uh, glide slope. So now that we're clear of the runway, the uh, only thing left to do is uh, clean ourselves up. Uh, flaps can come up, weather radar can go off if you're using it, ice protection off, auto course and off. Turn the seat top back to off and reset the trims for the next flight. And that's it. So that's a uh, quick lap around uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hope you've uh, enjoyed the uh, flight there. If you've uh, learnt something, leave us a comment or a thumbs up. If you've got a uh, suggestion for future videos, let us know, and we'll see you in the next video.